Welcome to Being the Genuine Athlete podcast, where we inspire those who aim for excellence in life and want to understand the how and what it takes to be a champion in life. My name is Jura Koschak. My purpose, dedication and commitment is to activate your potential, that you understand the ego through your sport and life situations. So I share and give you the tools to be just this, the genuine athlete. Are you ready to tune in? Hello and thank you for tuning in the Genuine Athlete Podcast. In this episode, I'm going to touch about the professional athlete with professional injuries. Not only physical ones, but also mental professional injury. Yes, we are sometimes insane. And also professional emotional injury. So let us continue with it. Um, Athletes, as you know, are an ambitious kind of a breed. We tend to, as a professional athlete, have a lot of things that we want to achieve, high ambitions, and we are striving, diligent, we just cannot stop. We don't know how to rest. We don't know how to even understand what is resting. We just want to run, achieve, accomplish, and get to the bottom of it, get to the achievement of it. But there is a big price to pay, and athletes have paid these prices for far too long. That's why I'm having this movement, I'm having this tribe building up in order to completely regenerate, to completely change the way athletes function, the way athletes live and actually go into life, go into fights. And this is training because athletes understand training. That's all there is. Life is training, sport, athletics is training. That's all there is. So in order to achieve that, Of course, you need to have knowledge, you need to have certain ideas of understanding uh, what it actually entails all together and what it goes about. Actually, to cut away this explaining, just right into it. Calming down. How do you calm down when you are like, uh, if I don't train, I will lose. If I miss a day of training, I will lose. There's nothing wrong with training multiple hours every day, nothing wrong with it. But when it comes to overtraining, burning out, not only physically, emotionally, uh, mentally, with psychology-wise burning out, that is where the problems happen. It says this, um, athletes just want to have achievements, just want to run somewhere, just want to uh, get to some goal. It's a normal disease of a hamster wheel. It's a normal thing of humanity, how we all just want to achieve all the time uh, the same old things. Uh, we all always just want to achieve uh, money, material stuff. That's the old world. This is why this uh, world is falling apart as it is. We cannot go back to that normal that was back then. We need to completely regenerate new world and new life that's happening now. So that's why athletes are being pushed now to also encounter themselves living at home, living with parents, not traveling, feeling uncertain, being uncertain, being trapped at home, quarantine, uh, being uh, looked upon if they are diligent and disciplined enough. Or is that only the case when they are training, when you are training as an athlete? So check yourself. What are you dealing with? What are you going through, especially in this year and before? So let's touch before this 2020. It's like before Christ and after Christ. We're going to be having in the future before COVID and after COVID, before 2020 and after. So before 2020, athletes were training. Everything was magnificent. Not for everybody, of course. Maybe you had issues with finances, with support, with coaches, with traveling, with your results or lack of results, of course. And uh, But the main idea was that athletes were training, striving, drilling, being driven, mainly ego-driven. Yes, you are ego-driven when you are pushing through the boundaries. Once again, nothing wrong with pushing through the limitations and the boundaries. But when the price is your injury, and not only a physical injury, 
I'm repeating again, emotional injury, which we're going to touch, and mental injury as well. Mental insanity, that's it, to be said, it has that bluntly. When that is happening, it means that you haven't taken all of the factors of one equation into the account, that you just wanted to run and achieve and, and, and you thought, if I'm like this, if I want that, then it must happen, then it will happen, then it needs to happen because I'm so much involved, I'm so much in, ingrained and inspired into that. All good for me, it all stands, nothing wrong with it. But as I said, you need to understand all of the factors of your body, not limitations, but your body, what your body is signaling to you. You cannot just listen to Arnold Schwarzenegger or any other Mr. Universe or any good athlete from West Les Mills or whatever they are doing. And with all respect, you cannot just take it for yourself. You need to know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you're going, you're taking not the tough path because that, that is a saying, take the tough path, take the rough path, don't take the easy way. What about taking the wise way? Why would you need to have your quads torn apart? Why would you need, need to have your Achilles tendon torn apart? Why would you need to break bones? Why would you need to, unless you're an extreme sport athlete, why would you need to have injuries of your shoulder, of your wrist? Why, why aren't you taking the wise path, the wise journey? Why is that so that you always think that you need to take the toughest part in order to grow? You can grow by being wise as well, very much. You cannot even imagine how important that is. And just to input a glimpse of my story, I was on that side. That's why I'm talking about it. I was on the insane side. I was just training. I wasn't being aware. I wasn't being conscious. I wasn't being wise. I was a crazy young boy in my teenage adolescence and then afterwards as well and up until I was 23, 25, when I began to turn on the, the button uh, of being wise, of listening, of observing. Before, I was just running like a chicken without a head. I was just training and I thought, that's the thing, I believed every thought that is repeated enough times, it becomes a belief. When it is a belief, it becomes a habit. After a habit, it becomes a result. And I had a lot of beliefs that I need to just train, train, train. Nobody will tell me that not. And that to, to achieve results, you just need to be all the time training, not thinking what you are doing and how. That, those are my beliefs. I'm not saying that somebody put them in me. Uh, those were my, even if somebody put them in me, those were my beliefs. I didn't slow down. I didn't, I didn't step back in order to check, to become, uh, to come out of the situation, to step back, to look at the situation from a different angle, different perspective. I got signals with bad results, with negative results. I got signals with my injuries, also a crazy injury that I'll mention later. I got signals from all different side, sides, but I didn't pay attention. My focus was on my belief I just need to work hard. The coach gives you an, an exercise, just do it. You're in table tennis, in physical uh, approach, in fitness, in gym, just do it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Just drill. Just go through. Just, just go. Just do. Just do. But in a crazy way, just do it. Because I was tired. I was exhausted. I was a teenager with having depression. Nobody diagnosed me, but I know that I, I knew that I was depressed. Why? Because I had no. I, I, I was not inspired. I needed a deep rest. I was just running through life. Is that happening to you as well? Do you find yourself in these examples of mine? I even kicked out of frustration. I kicked the table tennis table and I hurt my toe, the big toe on my foot that broke actually. I was that crazy. I didn't injure because I was a bit uh, too fast or because I was uh, doing something that went overboard, I was injured because of my frustration. So I was already pro-insane, professionally crazy a bit because I just wanted the result. I would do anything to get that result. I needed to play. I needed to win. 
I would do anything to get the result. Do you hear yourself being like that as well? This is a very bad belief. This is a downward spiral belief. This is a belief that disables you to enjoy, to, to be in life. Because I always admired, I always saw this, these athletes who were playing good and they were enjoying. And I was thinking, how can they just enjoy? How can they just be and play under all this pressure and all their, under all their ambitiousness? How can they just be like that e at ease? How is that possible? Because I didn't know. They also didn't know. They were just born like that or they learned, but they didn't know how they are performing like that as good. Because when I asked them, they didn't, they didn't know how to explain it to me. It's not that they didn't want to. They wanted it to explain to me, but I didn't know how to be pro-wise. Not out of pure talent, not out of pure luck to say, although luck doesn't exist, but out of, you know, being stupid lucky. You're being stupid and you, you are lucky. But actually knowing the step, the explicit detailed steps that are necessary for you to have in order to then get the outcome that is good enough for you, that is appropriate for you. So all of this that I'm explaining, it's actually happening in the pro athletics. And pro athlete is for me also a recreational athlete, person who just does something recreationally, but is so crazy that it wants to win all the time. Sometimes pro athletes are more crazy than professional athletes. So I'm talking to all of you athletes now, to all of the children as well, teenagers. You are struggling with this because you are trapped in the vicious cycle, in the repetitive cycle of just observing, just being pressured with this outcome that you wish so much and that you would do anything to get it. And of course you go and run. Of course you are diligent. Of course you are work hard working. Of course you are perfectionist. Of course you are decisive. Of course you are determined. Of course you are committed. You're everything that, that I mentioned. But as well, you are pro insane sometimes. You are professionally crazy. Because you turn a blank eye, you ignore the signals of the body by ignoring, listening to your body, to your emotions, to your mental side, thoughts that are signaling to you something. And by doing that, of course, the outcomes are tragic sometimes. Very tragic as well. Life's end. If not that, then we have invalids. If not that, disabled people. If not that... People who go away out of sport because they couldn't manage to cope with the pressure and the, I, the options and the idea, the variations and the help support is always available. Everything can be solved, especially this. There is a way to explain to guide. Not a lot of youngsters, teenagers, and then further on college athletes, university athletes and pro athletes afterwards. We don't need to. You don't need to suffer. You don't need to be pro-insane and pro-injured on all levels. You really, literally do not need to be. So, are you interested to hear how to come out of it? How to step out of it? The main idea, the main goal, the main intention is, first of all, to remember why you began doing some sport. Just remember why you wanted to kick the ball. What was so fun in kicking the ball, in hitting the ball to, to a wall, in, in being a karate judo fighter, in being a swimmer? Remember why. What is the reason? What, what attracted you? What was the positive drug that actually, what was the positive force, let's say it in that way, that has drawn you into that swimming pool, into that arena, in whatever sport it may be? You loved it. You loved the movement. And you chose a specific sport in which you are good at now, but in the way it has become not only a job, but an obsession. And in the way you have forgotten why you are in it, because you love it, because you like it, because you enjoy it. And you have become a grumpy old guy, grumpy old lady. Like a grand grandma and a grand 
grandma. Grandpa and grandma, yes. So how can you step now out of this vicious cycle? First, knowing yourself. That is why I have the archetype reading. Uh, check my page. Uh, I will add it in the bottom below this podcast. And then uh, you can also listen to the podcast episodes of all of the organs and let me know, write to me. You have my details that I can send you a specific PDF about the hidden secrets in organs and how to rejuvenate yourself to win, to enjoy, to enhance, to excel in your performance as an athlete. So first is understanding why you began to do something. Remember that you love the sport. You love the movement. If it's not this sport, then other, but you love to move. You love this force, this positive force that is uplifting you, this upward spiral. You actually in, you are in love with it. You are amazed by it. Second thing, knowing yourself. Knowing your limitations, programming, knowing your beliefs that are debilitating and that are the downward spiral type. Once you know this thing, yourself, these things about yourself, then you can begin to build new fundaments. Wherever you are, however deep or not deep you are in sport or in any ego way or however injured you are, you still have a chance to completely transform yourself. It's never too late. Even if you're an older athlete, above over 30 or something, over 40, you can still change yourself, transform yourself into being a pro athlete and a professional wisdom person. By being a professional wisdom person, you encounter, you confront these challenges of life that are happening now this year and when you'll be back to training in the arena with your teammates or with your coaches, not only at your home and on the Zoom app, uh, when you'll be playing back the matches or you're playing, but you're playing without the fans, when everything will be to a new normal, of course, the new thing that will be built, then you will be able to cope with this not out of your ego fears, out of lack of, out of insecurities, but out of wisdom. What is wisdom? People need a lot of experience to, that they, they are able to say that they are wise. They need a lot of experience. But sometimes, I would say all of the time, you can learn from other people, from lessons that other people had. Some there are some cases that you need to have, of course, your own experience. But sometimes with just stepping back, with observing yourself and others, you can come to a space, a place where you are able to grow your wisdom, to completely change the way you behave, to completely change, change the way you attack, the way you train, the way you play the game, the way you live literally, the way you live. Because, uh, you know, those sayings and those experiences of being wise in the negative, that means insane. By repeating the same thing, it doesn't change. Life will not change if you repeat the same thing. So in order to change things, you need to change. You can. All of the beliefs that you have in the form of thoughts are just that, just thoughts. That's not you. It's not you that you, need, that you think that you need to do because some thoughts, something inside of you is saying that this is the only way. It's not. It's been proven. How many of your friends, teammates, or outside people that you are watching and adoring and following as professional athletes, you see that they are doing something differently? Why does so many athletes have good training, hard working, but they don't have results because there's no professional wisdom included. This is why I'm all up for it, to give you the ability to activate this channel of wisdom. Everybody has that ability. We all have inside of us some more or less grumpy old voices that are debilitating us, that are limiting us. 
And this is where we can fight every day. Fighting against this ego every day enables us to transform and to create a new self, an upward spiral self, a new belief self. Every day, you cannot continue to stay the same and expect the, the new results. That doesn't happen. So I invite you all to begin to remember your child self, why you began with some sport, and to begin to observe why some good players, as some tennis players or football players or golf or swimmers or karate fighters, they are enjoying and winning and smiling. Yes, they work hard, but they still have a smile on their face. To connect, reconnect with that feeling that you rebuild yourself from love, that you don't do something out of fear, out of necessity, out of obligation towards someone, that you need to prove something. Are you there? You want to prove something to someone? But that you do it out of love for that sport, love for yourself. And I'm not talking emotions. I'm talking about the pure feeling of love. It's not emotions. It's beliefs that are positive beliefs that are enabling you to completely show and, and, and present, perform your highest living self and not being secluded and contracted in the old self, always pressuring yourself as I was pressuring when I was playing with all of my emotions. Something somewhere needs to snap. Either it's a muscle, bone, tendon on the physical level or anything else that's in the physical body. Either there are emotions that snap, emotions like frustration, disappointment, despair, depression. That's also an emotion. Sadness that's connected with depression, anger, self-doubt. That's also an emotion. These insecurities, that's an emotion, feeling insecure. But when it comes down to, it all begins in your mentality. What kind of a man mindset are you allowing? Because when you allow negative self-doubts, negative self-talk, in the sense, in the way of forgetting that you do something out of love, doing something out of fear, out of necessity, obligation, and insecurity or lack of being. You need the outside proof to feel good. You don't feel worthy. When you have these kind of thoughts, they mix, they mingle inside of you and they completely confuse you that when you begin to play the game out of fear, of course, you are creating your old self. You are recreating your old self. And in that way, in that sense, you begin to develop out of mentality, out of mindset, certain emotions, feelings, emotions, feelings. And out of those emotions and feelings, everything comes down to the physical form. The mind thought is the intangible thing. Then we have emotion, feeling, a bit more tangible, sometimes in tears, sometimes in frustration. Then we have the physical body that's the most dense representation of this. So imagine now flipping this coin, completely transforming your mentality, having the best mindset, upward spiral, positive self-beliefs possible, then accordingly, consequently having the positive emotions and then having the body, physical representation, the last type of this, the last consequence, healthy. Now, that doesn't mean being positive, not being aware of the negative. No, 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 no. That's what I meant when knowing yourself because you know your weaknesses. You confront your weaknesses and your demons. Becoming the new unity in the future. Being the new unity, it means being aware of the duality world that we live in. You are aware of the higher you want to go, the more fears the more uncertainty, the more insecurity will be triggered. The successful you want, the more successful you want success you want to achieve, 
The bigger the responsibility, the bigger the fear. You are not just, I'm just happy, I'm just doing this. That's insane. We are talking about pro-wisdom, being aware of all there is. And it's not as far as you think. Being negative, being pro-insane is much more complicated than being connected to the right channel of wisdom. You cannot imagine the difference, the big difference. So that is why and where I'm inviting you to become more connected with the wisdom channel. Remember once again why you are doing something because you love it out of love. You've begun doing some sport and the trainings because you loved it. Connect with that. Reconnect with that. Second thing, find out who you are. Really go deep. You need to know. You cannot be a Formula One driver and not knowing you demand of your car to drive, to be driven 350 kilometers per hour, and you don't know where the brakes are. You don't know how the brakes function. That doesn't happen in the Formula One world of these professional drivers. And then the next, so this is the thing that you need to know yourself. Then the next thing, understand that there is a world of duality that you need to be aware of. And this is how you become the unity, how you get out of this duality, because there will always be this ping pong game in your mind, the angel and the devil on the other shoulder. The ego voice playing tricks on you. There will always be this. So becoming a professional athlete, being a professional athlete with professional wisdom is the goal intention that you are going towards to. Why is this so important? Because you don't want to be injured, not physically, which is actually the last consequence, not emotionally, which is the middle one, and not mentally. You don't want to be insane. I was there. I was there, and it's not... Being negative is very uncomfortable. And breaking through, it seems uncomfortable, but then you get rewards that are beyond and above comfort. That's expansion and abundance of feeling free. That you win, you break through this insanity, and you win by being free with wisdom. Those feelings of playing whatever sport you're involved in with the channel of wisdom, is so strong, is so incredibly huge, is so amazing that you cannot imagine. So I invite you to, to take this leap of faith. What do you have to lose? What is there to lose? Your old self? What is there to lose? Your old ego voice? What is there to lose? Some old things? And what is there to gain? How much big of a price you're paying now by being old? and not being connected to the Wisdom Channel? And what's the price, what's the reward of breaking through and being the Wisdom Channel, being the professional Wisdom athlete? This is the highest reward available, athletes, dear athletes. With all of my heart, with all of my commitment, dedication, I sometimes, I cannot... Yes, I go to sleep. Sometimes I cannot fall asleep because I'm downloading these informations that are crucial and so important for the future of at athletes and the humankind. So important. Old athletes, old patterns are not supported anymore. We are all here to be completely renewed. We are all here to be new people to bring this down, to download. As an athlete, I adore athletes because we really have this ambitiousness, but it needs to be supported from the Wisdom Channel. Thank you very much for listening. I trust and I believe that I've clarified a lot of things. If you have any more questions, please do not hesitate and ask me without a risk. Contact me on Instagram, genuine.athlete or on Facebook. You can find me as well on a private personal account, Yure Co. That's J U R E K O, not knockout. Maybe I give you a knockout on your ego. Uh, and uh, see you on the other side. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you for tuning in. 
Follow me on being the genuine athlete Instagram and Facebook page. Share, like and comment and be genuine all the way.